psychologic chant. We always begin to set the tone and the time and the place and to realize genealogically we didn't come from nowhere. We came from long lines of ancestry. We came, we have genealogical, professional genealogy, our kumu, kumu, kumu. All that knowledge meets today in this room. That's what brings the manna. The fact that we collectively understand that we do not stand alone, that this room is much more full than it appears. All our ancestors, all of your ancestors, join us this day to make a better place. That we might sit all in the same canoe for the moment, all paddling in synchronicity, all traveling in the same direction, looking to the same destination. That is how we open. I want to offer one simple chance. One more simple chant, which is basically a horizon chant as we embark on this journey, that when you get to those horizons that you're going to, you'll realize there's other horizons beyond that we must need, we must have. The chant is called Aeon Love. <laughs> Thank you very much for that beautiful Oli. What Kiahi said to all of us is this. We're blessing this particular this event on behalf of all of you as far as participants. It is indeed a privilege to be here to be a part of the 8th Annual Economic <coughs> Bioeconomy Forum. It started, I believe, Janice, was it 10, 12 years ago, the first forum that we had, in building relationships between countries that Hawaii can be a part of. Hawaii being in the middle of the Pacific, we are facing a lot of challenges, and I think all of us face that in the countries that you come from. But more importantly, today's and tomorrow and Friday's events and activities are basically trying to bring us all together for the common good of sustainability of our Mother Earth. Governor Ige will be here very shortly, but at this time, may I call upon Representative Jackson Sayama to say a few words, but more importantly, to all the participants, thank you very much. We have participants from Vietnam, we have participants from South Korea, we have participants from other parts of the world, and even our own colleagues from the Big Island who are here also. So also before I leave to pass it on to Representative Siam, I wanna thank all of the volunteers who played a part in putting on this event, an event that will really benefit not only we who are here, but the state and county of Hawaii. And for our friends <coughs> from Southeast Asia, thank you very much because your participation will open the eyes of those who are local here in understanding what your particular country is doing. So, Representative Jackson Siama, would you like to please come up to say a few words? Hello, everyone. My name is Jackson Sayama. I'm the State House Representative for District 20. I took after uh, now Councilman Calvin Say. Uh, thank you everyone for coming today and uh, it's really been a long two years and I'm so glad that we could come here once again to open the 8th Annual Bioeconomy Forum. While 
we haven't been able to come together in person for a while. I'm really happy and glad that we have leaders like yourself, organizations that you represent, that continue to lead the fight against this generational challenge of climate change. Not so long ago, Hawaii, along with our allies, hosted the RIMPAC exercises. And while this was a great demonstration of our military prowess, of technological innovations through autonomous vehicles and collaboration uh, with our allies, you know, I'm glad that we can continue that spirit of innovation and collaboration today, not so much for the purpose of warfare, but for environmental peace. And so I'm excited today to listen to all your stories, your growth over these past two years and what you offer, not only to Hawaii, but for the rest of the world. As you know, Hawaii is a leader in the fight against climate change. And so what we do here matters. We're not just a small island. You know, what we have here makes a global impact. And so I thank you all for, day, for today, for coming, and for the great work that you will continue to do, not only for the state of Hawaii, but for your respective communities. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I believe Governor Ige will be here shortly. Uh, but in the meantime, um, please uh, relax and uh, please enjoy today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative Sayama. We also have as a special guest speaker, Mr. Doug Adams. Are you here, Doug, to say a few words from the county of Hawaii? The county of Hawaii. What does the county of Hawaii has that the other three counties do not have? Any idea? Okay, geothermal, but you guys have the volcano. Right? Doug, go right ahead. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. It's a, it's a tremendous honor and, and quite the privilege to be able to uh, stand up here and, and represent my mayor, Mayor Mitch Roth, um, from the county of Hawaii. And um, we also uh, are very happy that um, we have had, um, just as I believe has happened now, I think it's Honolulu now has representative in the Little League World Series. So congratulations. Uh, we know what that feels like as well. Um, we do pretty well from the state when it comes to that. This is a, an exciting time. Uh, this particular event, the next uh, three days, uh, the ability to have the conversations we're gonna have over the today and tomorrow, and then the opportunity for some of you to be able to go out to, I believe it's Waianae, and take a look at what um, is being uh, done in an agricultural setting when it comes to um, energy-related activities. This is, this is exactly the kinds of things that we need to be doing. On the island, uh, our island, Hawaii Island, we are looking at ways to make sure that sustainability is our watchword. It is the theme for Mayor Ross' administration um, and, and what he has been focused on. We know that um, we have already had one sustainability summit uh, when we first came in within the first 100 days, an opportunity to talk about the sustainable development goals that the, the UN has, and then also followed up with our own TED X talk where we talked about climate change and climate um, action plans as a part of um, the work that we're looking at moving forward with experts from around the world. It was a, it was a great event. Uh, we're working towards our next summit, uh, sustainability summit. It will be something that is policy based, a little bit more policy focused because if you're going to turn um, the good ideas that are out there into things that work, we know that you have to work through policies as well. So we're looking forward to the development of that particular summit here sometime in the late fall. I, I would also say that when we think about sustainability on our, line, on our island, it is done with a sense of what is good for all of the people of the island. So there's this real sense of equity as well. Um, we, we, we need to make sure that as we are moving forward to take care of the um, climate work that has to be done, to take care of the renewable energy work that has to be done, that we remember that we're doing this for all the people um, that we have, and in our case, all the people that we have on the island, including those that in some senses are the low to moderate income. For us, we think about the fact that 
nearly 50% or 50% of our population of the households that we have in the island um, are either, they're categorized as either ALICE, which is asset limited income constrained, um, but employed or in poverty. That's a significant issue for us. And everything that we do here over the next few days, all the conversations that we have here over the next few days and that we've been having and will continue to have um, reflect our attempts to make sure that we will um, work for good jobs so that folks can have a quality of life that allows them to take care of their keiki and their keiki taking care of their keiki. It is a part of what we look at as the thriving island that um, we know that we need to build and I know that the other counties need to build um, here as well. Uh, and so again, um, I'm very, very honored to be able to, on behalf of Mayor Roth, um, welcome you to this particular event. I'm looking forward, I was talking to some friends um, that I have, at least I think they're friends, I don't know what they think. Um, but uh, we were talking about how excited we were to, to see this, um, see the conversation, see what's being done. And then let me also not forget to welcome and to say thank you for our visitors and our guests here from South Korea and from Vietnam. Um, Mayor Roth had an, um, a few weeks ago had a just excellent opportunity to, to engage with um, delegation here from South Korea. We're very excited about the centennial that will be occurring here next year. Um, and so the work that you all are doing to bring business here, to help our business come to you, um, that's um, all things that are part of our economic development and, and economic revitalization, not just for Hawaii Island, but also for the state of Hawaii. So, so happy that you're here. Thank you, I will stop. I was trying to see if I could manage it for the governor coming in, but I'm gonna give it back to you, Councilman Say. Thank you very much, Doug. <clears throat> to highlight the forum, I, I truly believe that, first and foremost, the forum will be focusing for, on all of us in regards to carbon capture, storage, and utilization. That's a long phrase to say, carbon capture, storage, utilization, but it is a topic of interest for all of us who are here. Okay, I'll stop right now, and we'll have Governor Ige, my very good friend. I'm sorry I'm not in the state legislature anymore, Governor Ige, in supporting you, but uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for coming to the forum that we're having this morning and sharing your thoughts and your wisdom with all of the participants who are here. Governor, that particular mic isn't working, oh, okay? okay? <laughs> so, so this is my very good buddy who was in the state house, now before that was in the state senate, and for eight years now <coughs> being the governor of this great state of Hawaii, Governor David Ige, who really kept Hawaii in a very safe position during the COVID-19 epidemic. Uh, thanks, Calvin. I appreciate that. Uh, aloha and good morning. Uh, uh, mahalo to co-chairs, uh, Representative Jackson Sayama, and I know Calvin used to host this uh, when he was a member of the legislature for many, many, many years. Um, uh, but I, I did want to thank Jackson and Janice Cole for from the Hawaii Bioeconomy Forum, uh, and and council member uh, say for continuing to organize this important conversation. You know, five years ago, when the federal government walked away from the Paris Agreement, Hawaii was the first state to stand up and enact legislation committing ourselves to uphold the goals of the Paris Agreement. Uh, we set in law our zero emission clean economy target which aims to sequester more atmospheric carbon and greenhouse gases than emitted within the state as quickly as practical, but no later than 2045. So Hawaii became the first state in the country to commit to a net negative carbon goal because we know that net zero is not good enough. It really is about uh, extracting more CO2 and greenhouse gases from the, the, from the atmosphere than we emit. Uh, this, this year, 
a new Hawaii consortium was created by Hawaii-owned businesses and nonprofit organizations, Dibs Hawaii, Ho'olulu Holdings, Ohana Hui Ventures, Pacific Industrial Hemp Alliance, Friends of Waimanalo, Lei Foundation, and Hui Ho'olako to work toward a more bio-based economy for Hawaii. You know, reducing Hawaii's carbon footprint, which affects global climate change, can be done by relying on safe and thriving methods and solutions. Uh, today's forum is uh, really about discussing capturing harmful CO2 emitted daily by industries across the state uh, by using advanced technologies. These technologies safely scrub the harmful CO2 uh, into food-grade liquid CO2 to be utilized in positive ways, uh, such as energy and food production, construction, new workforce opportunities, community development, and education. We know that we can achieve these benefits and at the same time decrease Hawaii's reliance on imports and expand commodity substitution so that rather than sending money out of state, we can keep it in state to create new jobs here in the islands. Uh, this year I signed um, into law Senate Bill 2865 relating to the uh, issuance of special purpose uh, revenue bonds to assist Dibs Hawaii LLC to, in their use of the dry ice blasting system in so many different areas of our economy. Cleaning and maintenance of electrical equipment, killing bacteria, mold removal, and post-fire applications are just some of the areas uh, the technology can be used. I'm grateful for all the hard work and investments made by our state and federal partners, industry, private sector, um, private landowners, and non-governmental organizations in moving us toward our carbon footprint goals. I look forward to hearing more on our progress to achieving one of the most pressing environmental issues of our time. Uh, thank you so much for your work and interest in this area. Uh, this forum is a great opportunity for uh, hearing from private sector and other interested groups in what we can do by working together. So thank you all, appreciate the opportunity. Governor Egan, thank you very much for your vision. The past eight years has been tremendous. Tremendous growth in the Alternative Energy Forum, tremendous growth in the vision of where Hawaii is. People don't realize, and the general public doesn't realize your eight years as far as your contribution in addressing climate change. But in more particular, I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of the people of Hawaii for your public service. So at this time, I'll call, I'll call upon Janice to introduce our dignitaries from the respective uh, countries that are here and participating. Thank you, Governor, that he just signed the Senate bill and made it into law, and Act 198 was declared. So I'm so uh, proud that he's, uh, uh, he has uh, actually worked to support uh, the climate change and also the carbon uh, storage and also the utilization uh, in our, actually in our community. And today I'm honored to introduce uh, so many of beautiful, beautiful Vietnamese uh, friends and colleagues. 
and especially Dr. Nin has been, he should be in our committee. <laughs> so he should be our uh, co-chair as well. And he has been a more than co-chair, has been participating in the forum from the beginning. Uh, has, uh, he's a frequent uh, visitor to the US. He's a frequent speaker in the international forum addressing climate change. He's a known uh, a scholar and academician and uh, has actually owned the Center for um, the Training and uh, Education Development and Research Development, uh, CERET, uh, Research Center in Hanoi. So uh, we are grateful that he brought his delegation to show his commitment to climate change. And today, um, also, I must uh, acknowledge uh, there are many uh, big island. Uh, Doug Adams came from, uh, uh, he flew in this morning from Big Island. Also, we have uh, Warren Lee, if you don't mind standing up. <laughs> and he is a uh, CEO and president of uh, Huhonua uh, Biomass Power Plant. And uh, we appreciate his great work. And also, we have uh, Jerry Chang from uh, uh, Jerry. He is a former state of uh, Hawaii House Representative. and he also flew in from uh, Big Island. So we have uh, um, actually more than uh, 10 delegation from Big Island representing beautiful Hawaii. And we have a Doug Mekana uh, for beautiful <laughs> and tasty 100% coffee that he brought in in his uh, suitcase this morning. So we really appreciate David, uh, uh, Doug, because that's, uh, his coffee was chosen as a number one in the state. And so, uh, just flavor is just beautiful. And we also like to um, introduce, uh, we, because we have not been uh, gathered, we are so used to the Zoom conference. So today, but then it'll be mix, mixture with uh, some will rep, uh, present uh, through Zoom, and we also have a live stream. And uh, we got, uh, we have uh, the committee members that are so talented, they can probably run the TV station. <laughs> and, uh, and then also we'd like to recognize um, uh, Keone's uh, mom, mother and father who prepared beautiful flower setting. And uh, we really appreciate. At this time, um, we also have uh, many House Representative uh, Sam Kong and uh, Lisa Martin. We we'll have, yes, uh, we want to recognize And then later we'll hear from uh, Representative Elisa Martin. Uh, we also heard a beautiful chant from uh, Kiai. You know, the, he is the chief of staff of the se Senator Shima Bukuro's office. So um, that was just beautiful. And uh, we have uh, many speakers uh, in line. And uh, at this time, uh, we have, uh, of course, uh, the, the three uh, Benham presentation. We have a three Korean uh, presentation. So first the presentation is by uh, the Stephen He from PDI Design Group, very uh, obviously internationally renowned uh, design group, very sensitive to the environmental and uh, climate change and also carbon uh, reduction. And uh, just the one, uh, uh, Sydney, are you, uh, Scotty, are you guys ready for the later on, we will introduce our committee members. Uh, but at this time, we're going to we'll start with the PDI uh, representation by Stephen Ha. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much. And it is a real pleasure for me to participate in this uh, forum to discuss that uh, carbon neutral building design. Let me start with the, uh, uh, introduce myself. Uh, I have been, uh, I have been uh, architect for uh, 52 years and uh, practicing in United States uh, throughout the uh, United States, including Minnesota and Hawaii. And uh, I have been um, also teaching at the University of Hawaii more than 15 years, I'm still involved with teaching students. And then I am also teaching uh, many universities and uh, you know, colleges in, 
USA and the foreign countries. Uh, let me introduce uh, PDI. Uh, it was uh, founded in 1958, so 64 years old the company. And uh, I have been with them 52 years. And uh, PDI has a unique uh, worldwide global network. We call that PDI consortium members. And uh, we share our knowledge, our experience, and then our manpower. This has been very effective for us. Let me talk about the USA buildings. Uh, they consuming, uh, consume 39%, almost 40% America energy. And uh, out of that, 68% uh, is electricity. And uh, the, these buildings emit 38% carbon dioxide. Let me talk about uh, what is that renewable energy source at this time. So solar, wind, hydro, geothermal, bio, nuclear power. Very recently, they started this SMR and hydrogen electricity. And uh, I'm involved in this one, uh, SMR hydrogen uh, electricity more than any other, uh, of course, I did a lot of solar and wind too. And then uh, we call green buildings, all architects should uh, talk about, and these days uh, they said, uh, we have to uh, do smart uh, building design, smart and uh, also sustainable buildings in order to uh, you know, reduce that heating, cooling and the lighting load we have to bring it in new technology and then also efficient HVAC and the lighting systems. Plus, architecturally, we bring it in daylighting and the passive solar heating and then also thermal ground water cooling and the thermal mass roof garden is uh, many others. Let me introduce a PDI. Uh, as most of you probably know, there is a 1973 in the United States has the um, oil shock. And we received the award to design uh, University of Minnesota Law School. Now they call it Mondale, former Vice President Mondale Hall. And then uh, we have to focus ourselves and force ourselves to design the maximum energy savings so actually we are the one probably did actually implied and used those uh, passive solar systems and the daylighting and then you know, also thermal mass you know roof garden and many other systems so this is that uh, another uh, uh, you know the uh, side of their building but you can see whole all the roof area is uh, uh, covered with uh, you know plants and the uh, roof garden uh, this is very early uh, for us, so that you do not, you cannot see any plants. But now is a grow quite the uh, tall, uh, uh, you know, the plants over there. So as you can see, I use that uh, all the we use that uh, for you know three items: uh, daylighting and uh, passive and the uh, thermal uh, uh, roof garden. You can see that. We, uh, we actually cooling load 20% uh, better than uh, cold requirements and the cooling load is a 38% is a better than uh, the uh, Minnesota state law required the cold. And then we have uh, at 1976, this building they call Jelco headquarters, uh, you know, has been used by uh, GE Capital Group for more than 10 years. We also using similar uh, thermal system, passive uh, solar systems, and then all those daylighting. And then also we bring that, uh, we save the plants as much as we can and the bring the building out of a uh, you know, forest area as a priority. That also help us to saving energy and uh, for carbon issues. Then after that is that 1981, we did the former, uh, you know, Vice President Humphrey, Hubert Humphrey's Institute of Public Affairs. Again, uh, we use uh, across from law school. So again, we use that, uh, you know, like um, 
uh, roof garden and many uh, much a similar system. So we focus on how we can save energy. So because of that, we reduce the carbon, you know, like uh, emits. So you can see that the three levels of the, uh, you know, like uh, uh, daylight and the skylights. And you can see inside of that space itself has provided without lots of uh, electrical uh, lights, we can bring all kinds of you know daylight to bring it in and create a very comfortable and a nice space. And this building is a very interesting one. Uh, we received this, uh, we awarded and built this one based on the uh, internet, I mean, uh, design competition. And uh, they ask, they means the state of Washington ask us that they just announced that new environmental law and we have to follow their environmental law. Uh, interestingly, you can see that after 15 years of oil shock, you know, like uh, that people start, to, we at that time, it's a very a big issue is that sick building syndrome. We uh, blocked too much. And then also we even reduce uh, air exchange, fresh air exchange, and the people start sick. So then we have to not only save energy, but also a healthy building is uh, required. So this one, this building, uh, uh, you know, the uh, uh, actually for me to introduce uh, so many countries for this building. You can see, you know, like uh, the, uh, we use that atrium and then as well as uh, environment, there's uh, uh, the retention pond for that uh, clean water goes through this. And then we have another big, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, design competition in Korea, South Korea. And at that time, it's a 30 stories maximum housing. But, uh, you know, like we proposed with uh, 50 stories and we won uh, the design uh, first place. And we built about 20 years ago, 40 years, I mean, 30 years ago. So we have to, you know, in this area, we have a very carefully and we really looking for south orientation. That is a very, very saving uh, energy and plus also uh, more uh, light coming in. So site plan is very critical and they ask us to, all the units have that is that uh, uh, flowing in, uh, Han was flowing in uh, view and we uh, uh, come up with that uh, sunken garden. So that is that even the basement, uh, they really want to use a basement, uh, still we can bring in some lights. And uh, this is that uh, really well received and then, uh, you know, like even city, uh, Seoul city, uh, you know, recommended this is the really the ideal uh, sustainable building. Uh, we provide again, uh, roof garden, and then also, the, you know, like uh, through ventilation, you can see the slot between the two units. We have a uh, uh, sky uh, gardens for, so then the air still goes through and uh, that uh, properly locate. So maximize the uh, river view and maximize the south side uh, is orientations. And there is some, uh, you know, like uh, images and, um, Again, that this is a, a you know like a Duluth, Minnesota. Uh, it's a you know college, community, and uh, technical college buildings. We just they want us to add something, and because it's very cold over there, and there's a, some space, you know, people, students, gathering space. So again, uh, not only saving energies, and we we provide the, uh, the good environment for study. Uh, this is the one in Pusan, uh, you know, like a convention center. We designed Minnesota Convention Center. And then after that, it is another major convention center. You can see they need uh, some space with a pool of lights. And uh, uh, winter time is, a, you know, lots of sun, uh, sun coming in. But summertime, we just, you can see the top of that skylight, uh, they have a uh, ventilation window. So air uh, blows through that load to up there and then it's uh, make people uh, cool over there. So that's the one and then also, you know, like uh, all kinds of device. 
this one reason I showed to you is that, uh, you know, we want, uh, uh, we participate in 68 uh, international design competition and we won uh, 47 of them. So the reason is that I always emphasize uh, how we can make that the sustainable energy savings and then people uh, oriented uh, design. And this one is that also, you know, everything is a South orientation is very critical and view, but also that uh, they required uh, indoor water parks so that we said, okay, summertime and then, uh, you know, outside is good, then they open up the, you know, like a, a roof and then flow in the lower level is open the door and fresh air go through and make the uh, building itself uh, cool and save energies. So there is uh, some of that, you know, like uh, show. And uh, also that 117 uh, stories towers, uh, uh, same way, because the location and the master plan is a very important. And then also, you know, like a design. People are saying is that how we can have a glass buildings, but it's a now is a, a, we introduce low E and the triple glazing and the cell pool. Uh, you know, cleaning glass, but now is that Korean technology they found uh, that, uh, you know, now we can produce solar energy at even vertical glass. So I'm so happy to, uh, you know, like uh, we can use that uh, for next project. And uh, in order to uh, reduce this uh, carbon uh, emission and uh, again, very critical new promising, uh, you know, like energy source and technology is that hydrogen energy uh, yeah. using that SMR, you know, like a small size nuclear. Uh, this is a uh, one tenth and uh, size wise, and then also safety and everything is uh, so, so huge, I mean, small. And also very important is the uh, carbon capture and storage system. I find that out uh, there is two speakers who will cover this in depth. So that is, uh, I will uh, go back and go to what is a hydrogen uh, power we have? You know, best one, there's a three different types. Best one is that uh, green hydrogen. And then uh, there is obviously, you know, they need the electricity in order to create the hydrogen or electricity. So, uh, this is show uh, you know wind, but there is a we can show you know the, the solar and the others, but hydrogen is a three different type: gray hydrogen, blue hydrogen, and green hydrogen. So we have to uh, you know like uh, develop and we just uh, use more uh, you know green hydrogen. There is a seventy one percent of gray is uh, right now using it, but we should focus on this uh, green hydrogen electricities. There is uh, some case studies uh, for green hydrogen. And then, you know, this one shows, uh, you know, case study two is that, uh, you know, solar energy is a power, uh, you know, like uh, initiate for creating hydrogen. And then this one is that you can see in the ocean, there is a uh, wind power force. And then now we're talking about SMR. And uh, let's, uh, uh, you know, again, carbon capture storage, you know, CCUS uh, utilization and the storage systems against uh, uh, some other uh, speaker will cover, but this is the diagram. So that governor says, you know, we need uh, not only that uh, industrial facilities, but also from the air. So this is captured that and uh, some of them use it, some of them storage in the underground or uh, on uh, shoreline, off shoreline. Uh, it is very lucky, uh, PDI. We have been known to them as uh, in Korea, known to them is that we are really emphasized and then I gave a lot of lectures about how we can save uh, our environment. And then these uh, this people, this is a big group. Uh, I, I don't know, I cannot tell their name yet, but it's very soon I will uh, come to a, you know, government, uh, you know, Hawaii government, there are many governments about these companies. We have become a partnership agreement 
and they're based on that president, uh, you know, Biden, come to Korea and uh, they have, a, you know, not only security, you know, like, a, uh, you know, alliance, but now it's technology and business to business alliance. So this company select us, PDI, to be working for them. They are representing in USA for uh, immediately two, uh, two uh, alliance projects. One is that uh, uh, using United States original source of the technology, you know, MSL, uh, SML technology, plus Korea already have a lot of equipment and operating technology. So we want to make that as an alliance together and provide that actual things to, uh, maybe we might just start in Hawaii, uh, hopefully. And then is that, uh, you know, many other uh, USA. That's one thing. Now, the other one is that they have a similar, you know, hydrogen water uh, with that fuel cell and all in one. This technology is put it into, you know, like the United States large blockchain IoTT platform. So then they just to make that is that uh, more, uh, uh, you know, like uh, practically using for these uh, systems. So as I go through very quickly, and uh, again, I will introduce AIA is uh, American Institute of Architects. Our goal, our commitment is uh, uh, let's make the uh, uh, carbon neutral all together, not only with the architects and contractors, developer, and then also that general public. So that's uh, our commitment, AIA commitment. And uh, so we really uh, like this commitment. I'm a fellow of AIA and love to be uh, uh, part of that. And uh, so that's my uh, speech is very uh, short, but hopefully we'll, we can meet again in more in-depth discussion. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Later, we will uh, collect actually all the uh, questions for you to respond um, at this time. Thank you so much for your uh, great presentation. And uh, we look forward to hear more, uh, learn more about PDI. We have uh, Mr. Jagon Lee in Hawaii for uh, PDI chairman. And so we appreciate him uh, being here with us. Um, Today, um, at this time, we have a uh, uh, SNE solution uh, Korea's presentation. Uh, Sydney, if it's ready, ready then. Um. Kioni, would you mind coming up? I wanted to invite Kioni because he has a full uh, presentation in the afternoon, but I wanted to uh, invite him in the morning to. Uh, so we will present about the uh, hydrogen uh, economy of, uh, of Korea. Just about a week ago, they had a, a hydro economy fund for $500 million uh, and a matching fund from the government, Korean government, uh, to show their commitment for hydro economy for another $500 million. So then the $1 billion fund was uh, established to support their drive for uh, hydro economy. So SNE has been a uh, uh, forefront uh, for this. They have about 18 companies, uh, including SK and L uh, LG, and uh, all of the largest uh, Korean corporations driving in the energy sector. And SNE, uh, the one private small uh, company, has been included in these 18 uh, companies. And so because of their drive, and they're also, uh, Mr. D has been here meeting Kioni many times, and his commitment to Hawaii and also to Deep Hawaii uh, and Hula Holding is uh, great. And uh, he just got COVID in Korea. And so that's why I ended up uh, uh, presenting this. And, uh, but he wanted to tell you that uh, his commitment to Deep Hawaii is clear and, and loud. And uh, now uh, with the companies, uh, uh, 18 companies driving this uh, Korean government's 
uh, hydro economy. Uh, uh, they will also visit here and then also meet with uh, CUNY. And so uh, this is Hemangum. Uh, it's located in Central West Coast, and it is the largest landfill um, area and designated as a renewable energy uh, industrial complex. And so they are driving this as a hydrogen uh, production and application uh, complex. Next. Next, next, next. So we have elaborate, uh, he present, he prepared great uh, presentation, but uh, we wanted to um, just give you the core uh, uh, content of uh, the launching, uh, why the Korean government is launching an SMG. They went for solar, and then they went for wind. Now they are going for hydrogen. So I think uh, we are all addressing about food and energy and water, and that is uh, critical for our human life. And uh, what CUNY has been doing in, uh, uh, here for the last 20 years in Hawaii locally uh, was incredible with his uh, Tips Hawaii um, uh, technology and application. And so we wanted to adopt that in Korea, and also uh, we wanted to uh, invest heavily also, the new bill that was just signed by the governor uh, that we would like to support for the uh, special revenue uh, bond, uh, special revenue purpose bond. And uh, CUNY had uh, uh, actually written up that bill and had driven to uh, gather all the support from uh, state uh, energy office. Today, we uh, really appreciate uh, all the help from uh, State Office of Energy. Uh, Scott Glenn will be uh, presenting later today, but uh, his office and uh, many, uh, uh, even the restoration and the food uh, table, they, they provided great help. So really uh, appreciate it. And it also, uh, we wanted to uh, recognize um, Mr. Lee Yung-gyo, Lee Yung gyo from Senator, uh, Representative Kong's office, but he's uh, also the leader in the Korean uh, community in Hawaii. And also we have uh, Mr. So Young Dae in the back. Um, he's a vice president of the, the United Korean uh, Association of Hawaii. They just received uh, the key to enter into the Makiki uh, Library as a Korean cultural center, which is significant for, um, for the Korean immigration history, which will celebrate 120 year next year. And so let, we'll go back to, <laughs> thank you for all your help. And Councilman Say and Councilman Council and State and the city had all been great support for that drive. Thank you. So going back to um, SNE, uh, after uh, they were designated, this SMG was designated there were uh, many plant and investment plan has been um, uh, written out. And uh, we have invited Dr. Nin and also Vietnamese partners to drive this together. And that's why uh, I wanted them, uh, Dr. Nin to meet with uh, Kioni and also uh, that we wanted to discuss about partnership. Uh, tomorrow we'll be signing an MO, MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, with uh, Dr. Nin and also uh, Kioni uh, tomorrow. And uh, we'll have another uh, memorandum of agreement with the uh, Korean uh, organization. And so with SMG, it's, it's a, uh, because Mr. Lee is not here that I don't want to overstate, but yet uh, the hydrogen economy is in the Korean government's direction and the reason. And uh, that's how they uh, come up with their budget and they come up with the policy uh, to work with private sectors and uh, R&D sectors to uh, uh, drive this uh, hydro economy in uh, Korea. And its hydro um, uh, production is not easy and not cheap. So there are many, uh, many answers, many solutions that we need to see it uh, to be provided to us. At this time, we 
many difficult uh, challenges are in you know, the fueling station and how this could be even applied for the shipbuilding and transportation and even the uh, household uh, heating. Uh, it's all right now, it's all a fossil fuel. That, and so that we all saying the hydrogen is an answer. And then also this, um, uh, the carbon capture storage and utilization is an answer. The whole globe is uh, driving. And I wanted to have a Kioni to actually shine and drive uh, from Hawaii to showcase. So then uh, Korea can invest and the Vietnam can invest. So all of uh, our Vietnam uh, partners are here to show their commitment and to uh, show uh, their friendship and also uh, have their purpose uh, to meet with us and also uh, to set up a long-term goal, not only the short-term goal, uh, to uh, drive this hydro Would economy like altogether. To on behalf of Soiva. So, okay, Franklin, just a second. Uh, we have uh, just a few more minutes. So he's, uh, Franklin will be, uh, Frank will uh, present Soiva in just a few minutes. And so, because this is, has so many writing in it, I don't think people can read it. <laughs> That's why I'm uh, summing, uh, sum it up to uh, give you uh, their uh, coming for, for investment. And at this time, I'll give uh, Mike to uh, Kioni, just give a brief uh, introduction of what he will present it this afternoon. Thank you, Janice. I'm actually going to go sit over there. I didn't want to block your presentation, so don't mind me. Oh, I just use this one. If you can do five minutes, it'll be great. Oh, mic check, okay. <laughs> Aloha mai kako. O kioni ko uinoa. O waianae maiao. So I, my name is Kioni Ford, and I come from the district of Waianae. And I, and I want to give thanks. Um, first, I'd like to start this presentation by being grateful and showing appreciation and thanks for um, Governor Ige for taking the time to come and spend with us to highlight um, his, his goal, his objective of his tenure is to mitigate our carbon footprint and to make Hawaii the tip of the spear for the global community. And so in honoring his effort and his commitment, uh, much of this discussion of the CCSU, which is a lot easier to say than carbon capture storage utilization, um, we hope that by the end of this presentation, uh, there is a familiarity of what the acronym CCSU is, and CCSU affects you and me. Um, that is our responsibility to uh, take note of our carbon footprint, the impacts, import substitution, the choices that we make in the foods that we eat, the fuels that we choose to use, and the destinations that we head. So um, I wanted to first thank Governor Ige. I also want to thank um, Councilman Se. Thank you so much for your kokua and your support and the leadership in, in making this the people's house and having it the voice of uh, the local Hawaiian businesses who can showcase the innovation, the technology, and really bring to light native intelligence and the impacts that it has on the CCSU. Um, I next want to give thanks and praise to um, my senator, Senator Miley Shumabukuru. Um, she's not here, but her mom, Auntie Karen Young, is here. So thank you, Auntie Karen, uh, for being a big support um, to Dibs Hawaii and the office of Senator Shimabukuru for being the champion of Senate Bill 2865. Um, we thought it best that it come out of the native Hawaiian community um, to showcase our resilience, our robustness, and our agility. I also want to give thanks to Representative Lisa Martin. Um, she co-sponsored the bill on the House side and uh, her efforts in the nonprofit front in reforestation, non nonprofit community give back, and the focal point of uh, rebuilding healthy soil systems is in direct alignment with the, the applications of the CCSU. Um, so we're, we're, very, we're very grateful um, to have a talking point today on, on this, this matter. Um, I briefly want to talk about Senate Bill 2865. Um, it, was, it, was written in, it was written in concert with a consortium, and I use the word consortium because it's, it's a community that's going to make a change. There's no one company, there's no one technology alone that can stand 
to tackle this complexity of what we're dealing with as it relates to, of course, food and energy resilience, but most importantly, our carbon footprint as it, as it pertains to our food and energy resilience. So I want to um, acknowledge uh, my, the consortium partners of Native Hawaiian businesses um, with the support of uh, Ho'ulu Holdings, our innovation technology partner, um, providing net zero um, power generation. Um, they have incredible insight into technologies that will change, shift, and um, pivot to a better place where we can start to focus on carbon negative. I think we're hearing a lot of carbon neutral. Uh, we have a great presentation today um, by Mr. Tom Quinn that will highlight um, going into carbon negative and what that means. So I'm not gonna touch too much on that. I also wanna thank um, our good friends, uh, Ohanahui Ventures, Mr. Scotty Wong, and the Consortium of Farmers, uh, how important it is for all of our farmers um, who help to address climate change and climate Im import substitution. If we have the ability to um, make our food here at home, we offset all of the fuel costs and all of the fossil fuels burned to get our, our food here. So even if we could make an adjustment of 5% to the 95% importation that we're having, that would have a dramatic in, uh, impact um, on our Hawaiian lifestyle. So I wanted to thank our farmers and um, the consortium of the agricultural partners of Hanahui Ventures. I want to um, yeah, thank you. Our nonprofits, um, for every great for-profit out there, there's a nonprofit that is supporting it and the give back goes both in hand in hand. So our friends in the back, uh, Friends of Wai Manalo, Mr. Scotty Reyes Muniz, he'll also be presenting today. Um, the training programs that they do for Native Hawaiian communities, workforce development training. Uh, it's very important as we start to tackle these very complex issues that we always are maintaining knowledge, shared learning, ike alapono. You'll see a lot of that today, ike alapono. When you leave here, understand that we share knowledge and by sharing knowledge, we grow together, we grow people. And so we'll highlight on that later. Um, Mrs. Charlotte Poy of Lay Foundation. Uh, she's also a part of this, this um, consortium. She is a nonprofit from YNI. She's not able to attend today. So I will be presenting her presentation um, on growing people. Um, and mahalo nui uh, for allowing us to have a platform to speak to you today. And um, I thank give you it so back much. To you. So thank you. We want you to stay for his presentation. That was my point. He can start and not gonna stop. He has so much uh, compassion and uh, vision to share. And uh, this young man uh, had to be shining. That's why I asked him to come up. So I really appreciate it, thank you. Uh, so one uh, statement for uh, SNE, because the president, uh, CEO is not here, I just wanted the CFO is not here. Just one word to summarize his presentation is that South Korea is beginning to develop domestic infrastructure to import hydrogen. So they're not ready to produce, but they are so ready to <laughs> import and they're looking for uh, the technology and wanting to invest in, uh, uh, in Hawaii as well. Uh, why South Korea has a competitive heavy industry sectors, as you know, such as uh, steel making and shipbuilding, the use of hydrogen in these hard to um, uh, decarbonize, decarbonize uh, sectors has not yet uh, emerged as a primary focus of the government in its pursuit of a hydro hydrogen economy. But they are more than ready. Uh, just, just a week ago when they signed on a billion dollar uh, hydrogen fund, and that is their uh, commitment. And then the, the, the commitment with the policy and the budget uh, comes together. And so um, at this time, the, and at this time we will have a actual, uh, the modular uh, training program and also education program for uh, carbon uh, reduction monitoring. And so that has been uh, prepared and there has been actually the monitoring training program has been uh, applied and, and actually uh, has conducted in Korea. And that's our third and last uh, presentation for uh, Soiba. Uh, Frank, are you ready? Soiba? Yeah. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Thank you.
denke ich, hören die Uhr sehen. So Frank Stein, uh, he was uh, uh, with the Department of Defense. Uh, actually, he was in Korea. He was uh, actually a uh, controller for Air Force and uh, very has a formidable background. And uh, now he's in Washington, D.C., uh, work as a, a DOD uh, consultant. And uh, his wife is a student, uh, I think, Air Force. And uh, we wanted to hear uh, Frank uh, and uh, Soiba uh, R&D has been working for the digital uh, economy and uh, digital platform. And so, uh, if um, Frank is ready, Sydney, do you hear him? Frank, can you hear us? So this is a truly hybrid conference. Uh, we are on site here, but then we have a live stream and uh, Zoom uh, uh, from 9 to 5 that we are using Alika's <laughs> Zoom account. Hello, everyone. For all My day. name is Frank. Stein. Hi, Frank. Can you hear me well? Yes. Can everyone see this? Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, thank you. All right. So I'm Frank Stainpine. I'm with the Soiva team. Um, you know, just to give you an overview on our monitoring processes around um, clean energy and um, being ESG compliant, um, as you've heard our fellow. Uh, presenters talk about the green initiatives and where we're heading. We like to look at the data mining, the management, and the understanding of how we certify whether or not companies are truly green and are staying within the parameters of uh, ESG movements. So uh, as you can see, this is where Soiva fits in. Um, we are doing the data monitoring, the governance, and the ed education processes so that we can better understand with the partners that we work with, how they're presenting the data when it comes to carbon emissions to us in a usable format that we can share to others and be able to uh, consume and provide APIs that validate the value of the data that's coming in and making sure that, most importantly, the data is exact and how it's being represented, i.e. there's no need, no longer issues with in, uh, individual companies uh, saying that they're carbon neutral and they actually are just buying carbon offsets to make themselves seem like their uh, carbon uh, emissions are low. Um, this next slide just goes over where our individual uh, management centers are actually tracking the flow of, um, of carbon reduction footprints and how an organization is actually transmitting the data to us to ensure that they fit within this schema. Um, as you can see, we have multiple phases when it starts from the actual product being produced through the export exporting processes, uh, the customs importing and going to the buyer. So if you're trying to say that you're fully green, we want to make sure that through all the checks, our systems are actually being very uh, transparent and clairvoyant on how products are staying within the green initiatives. Uh, this next slide just kind of gives you a, a, even a deeper overview of how our systems are actually working within the local governments, uh, along with the uh, with our cloud providers and our technical stack to actually give an overall view of how this product gets to the market to actually show how we're reducing carbon footprints and how we're getting closer to a net zero carbon emission. Uh, the key uh, assets that you can see is um, a where the local government gets in and how they're distributing their public policies and uh, receiving the information from the individual uh, organizations via their uh, just through via our platforms and via their checkpoints to ensure that However, they're processing forms uh, that they're in the current regulation processes and within the architecture that is supposed to be consistent with uh, ESG and carbon neutral uh, um, <clears throat> developments for their end products. Um, as you can see here, this is where we talk about overall vision of, of how each individual within the Soyva team is actually managing the process 
And uh, within the Soiva's vision, they've been actually pretty going, are going hard to the grind on developing a full-on education system so that we can train individuals on how to actually annotate, how to do the analytics on companies with their emission processes, um, and also for their reporting processes. Uh, and along that line, we've are creating a job sector that's going to support this industry for any of the companies that are utilizing Soiva services. So uh, what we at the event at the end see as an expect, sorry, expectation effect is that we'll be producing um, skilled workers at multiple levels that understand the flow and management of carbon emission and carbon reduction initiatives. And this is really key, especially when you look at turnover and uh, especially with changing in policies and actually changing in emission standards. When you have a individual that you brought in from cradle to grave, they have a better understanding of how carbon emissions should be tracked and how are the soy systems being used to actually make this happen. Uh, this basically is a really high level view of how the individual company will come into the soy system and with respect to how the, also the government is monitoring it. And this is very key for the multiple, phase, multiple phases that are in the overall structure to get to neutral, neutral carbon emissions and compliance. Um, there's a basically a five stage step for each of these key market players to be able to interact within our or within their architecture and be able to share information as they reach their goal of net zero compliance. Um, one of the uh, bigger initiatives as they move through Soiv has been working with a few of the long standing uh, leaders in blockchain technology to actually uh, increase the um, trust factors within how data is being entered and managed. So I think the evolutionary cycle will allow the system to grow throughout the multiple phases of uh, carbon management and the future of carbon emission management trading. And this is just to kind of give you an overview of where they've been at. They've just a number of, uh, of, of young people just finished the education process. They will soon become your experts within the uh, next few months. And they are already ready and looking at doing the data analysis and data monitoring within some of the companies that have already signed up for Soyva's program for trucking carbon emissions. So uh, as this is a very large scale problem with the change in ESG and carbon emission requirements, we are getting ready to have a workforce that could manage this for the coming future. And this is just kind of an overview of the training centers that Soiva has put out uh, to meet this demand and um, they are churning them out at a pretty successful rate in the four to six week period. So all in all, things are going along the plan and we're looking to bring in more companies to meet this requirement. Those within South Korea, Japan, Vietnam, and uh, there in Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you so much, Frank. We actually have started uh, some monitoring program and actually uh, job creation. We are starting with a small number, but uh, we have about five persons in Hawaii uh, start to work on this part-time basis. And uh, they just had a first payment uh, this, this month. And so uh, Korea, they work with the, uh, the Korea Trade Union and also Minister of Labor and Minister of Science, Technology and Information uh, the financing uh, for training uh, purpose. And they assigned uh, Soiva to develop the content and for training and education. And so uh, that has been very successful. And they're expanding to different, they are uh, mainly did on uh, in Seoul and uh, working it uh, first to work with the two universities, Pyeongtaek University and uh, uh, Sungshir University uh, for the IT and uh, smart convergence uh, uh, digital uh, content development. But they are expanding to different uh, cities, different regions to train these uh, monitors. And also they are hiring the, uh, the seniors. 
after they retire, are retiring that uh, uh, they got time to do and they have a talent to not to be wasted. So they are rehiring and recycling their talents to be used to be monitored. So that's what the training the Soiba is about. So we are um, uh, two minutes away. I mean, uh, we're just over two minutes. So <laughs> uh, uh, Dr. Nin, I wanted you to bring all of the speakers so that they can sit there and hear as well. And then, yeah, okay, so you can take over. Thank you so much. Vietnamese delegation will come for their presentation. We have uh, three presentations with the four speakers. I want all of them to come and sit, yeah. We have also a translator. He's a PhD student from UH. Greatly appreciate it. Oh, okay. So all 
when I work with the IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, for you know, 20, 30 years ago, and uh, you know, 15 years ago, this uh, 2007, when for the assessment, we both the IPCC announced, nobody believed, but we, we believe, we, 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 we did believe, because we uh, accounted the temperature, the surface temperature of the Earth, and the sea surface temperature, and we know that it's a problem. And you, you see, you know, so very important that is Paris, we have here. So from 20 to 30, uh, history is very good, because this determines the direction of our temperature increasing, and it is the make the strategy in the direction for our human in the world, how to develop is the, the you know, this paper for two Celsius degree at the end of this century, or maybe more, or, you know, four or five, so we can survive or not. Now this, there is, this decay is important. So if we, you know, we can make the zero carbon in, in 50, see that this, this in, the temperature is still increasing. At least, you know, 20, 30 years. That's important why you do it. Uh, the next one, you can see, you know, so I myself, you know, measure uh, the carbon dioxide in Romanoa, in Big Island, you know, 10 years ago. So at that time, it's, you know, nearly 400 ppm. I measure in the in Romanoa, in Big Island. And so that's one, the station, of the big station. And now you see that, now in June, you know, this year, 200, 20 years ago, BPM. So this is comparing with 200 years ago. So create the create first industry in, in evolution is now 40% of the carbon dioxide you know, concentration is increasing in almost a fact. So that, you know, so you, 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 can, you can see the temperature may increase in one or two degrees, but really the extreme even is maybe 10 degrees. So this is why this, this summary, you know, in Arab, in the US, in, you know, uh, China or in Japan, you know, so nearly 45, maybe 50, and the first time in London, first time in London, 40 Celsius degrees. So this, this you know, the, the, the Islam even, you know, this is very important, you know. So the flood, the typhoon, you know, uh, you know, the heat wave, so other things, and this is it, you know, it's always linking to the temperature increasing. Uh, uh, we can see, you know, very important. So uh, we, we become the, the most petrochemical era in this century. So about you know, half a century later, so 50 or 60, you know, or 70, all the oil, you know, we know, we know, we have no oil more. So in this century, so we exploit oil. So, so we become the, you know, we call the post petrochemical era. So what is in the post? What is in the resources? Instead of the, the oil, instead of the fossil fuel. Now that's the question. For, and in, 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 in this century, so the population is a rich 10 billion people. So 10 billion people in this earth. So important that so uh, I am working uh, you know the the climate change security. I am an adjunct professor in San Diego State University for for uh, global climate and security. So we study you know the food security, the energy security, and you know the water security. So it's a very key point for the human human being. And if you know the, how to be more resilient. Earth, you can see, this Earth over two days. In this year now, because now in this year, we need, we need 1.75 Earth. Because our Earth now, you know, the ecological recycle or even the resources, not enough for human beings. So at the moment, at the moment, we need 1.75 Earth for this. So you know, see. So we can see why we need the sustainable way to develop the economy. Why we need the combination with you know scientists, scientific technology and the business. 
So why am I a scientist? You know, I, I become the advisor, you know, or consultant for, for you know, businesses. Now this reason. Because otherwise, you know, the enterprises go this way, scientists go this way, politicians go this way, and we never meet together. Uh, the next one, so you know, we know all, this, you know, the 17, you know, go. So, first, uh, SDG go. So, everything in time, and every country is trying to, you know, uh, achieve in the next 20, 30 years. Not so easy, but we try, we try the best. Uh, now, 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 we, you know, become the new, new concept, new concept in this century, in last century. So, we, the new concept is this, the, you know, we have, we have many, you know, the concept, uh, green development, low carbon economy, uh, you know, the uh, green growth strategy, and I think that the, the key point, this we call the, Climate smart reason. Climate smart, climate smart reason. So everything we think about the climate smart, everything, and 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 the climate smart reason is drive the circular economy. The circular economy. I will explain this one. But the but the climate smart reason that drive the you know the CE in this century. They determine the trading, determine the investment, determine the business. In this century, we must do that. We have no choice. We have no action. We have no another word. We have no plan B, early plan two, plan A. This our earth. We don't have. We have not have plan two in this century. So that we must go this way. No way. Uh, the 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 plan must be done. Cover very wide. Very wide. From you know, the architecture, from landscape, imaging, technology, business, investment, market investment, uh, even work plan, even ADP, how to invest, uh, uh, culture, because we, we, we have to change the behavior. You have to change the customer. Uh, always the culture, change, uh, of course, capacity. Everybody is now thinking about the capacity. How do we say about smart uh, And, uh, you know, uh, very important that we have to be the global election network for that. Why we see that? Why we need the, the C, sequel economy? Because sequel economy, that in every phase of production, we have to save a lot of things in each phase. Not just the waste return back, the benefit thing of production, but each pay of production, all the way this circular system. It's kind the best circular, each pay. I need to for each one. The next one is that uh, the circular economy, the bioeconomy, this is the best agreement for SDG. That's very important because that's linked together. So CE, circular economy, is as a tool, as a tool for Paris Agreement for carbon dioxide, very important. So this is the, this the theory. Now, why we need to see? Because see this tool. See, we not the guy, see, we need the tool for that, uh, for all. Uh, and I think now here, we are, we are working in bioeconomy and circular bioeconomy. So, pure about the fuller split economy from the resources that we can change, land use, land use, land use, land, land, use, land uh, uh, biodiversity, of course, it's with that, and food flow and work. This is all the thing that, you know, this cycle, this bioeconomy, and this, uh, we call that uh, the circular bioeconomy. I think, for so this that we see, so, at the moment, only 8.6% of production into circularization. Only. So, uh, you know, we can earn how in the US or in the UK. Nearly 40% of product, of, you know, the food is go to the waste. So, every, you know, go to a uh, the market or to buy for a week, 
and the end of the week, we see it in, uh, you know, our refuture, how much? And nearly 40%, you know, go to the truth. Now, in the, in the West and the UK. Other countries, the same thing, in the rich country. So this is why that, so we waste a lot of things. So that only, you know, nearly you know, 9% of the person is doing this. That's what we need for enterprises. We need to improve production. We need to improve production. We need to improve product. And we need to improve, very important, the business model. The business model. We have to change the business model. We save energy, we save the, you know, the material, and, you know, we, we reduce, you know, the waste. And we recycle the waste into the material. And that's why we do. Why the CE, you know, the, the enterprises, they need. And now we, when we are counting global scale, global scale is the world, all this world business cancer, I am relative for Vietnam, for private smart agriculture in this position. This by the in Switzerland. And I think more than that, because my six, seven percent different thing about the sea has become one person than two years ago. The second one, that is two percent very that the sea is important for future success. And uh, 85% expect, you know, the higher investment in particular to project in the future. Because this is the, the, this is the, the, the pre-investment. You buy first, you buy first, and you get written back. So that, you know, the, the German have to write at this time, what? I, 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 I showed the example, to my region, where I reach my region, Vietnam and Hawaii, my region, they can survive the sufficiency if we have the good business model. So Hawaii and Vietnam, why I choose Hawaii and I choose Vietnam because it's absolutely these two different, you know, very important bio region in the world, even even political system different, even political system. It's different, but it's not no no mind. Never mind. I can work both because I work for more for both that one. And if we successfully implement in Hawaii and Vietnam, we can duplicate all the world. We got the world eighty percent developed country. If the developed country poor, our our is poor. So I think this uh, if we can duplicate, you know, between Vietnam and in Hawaii different system, different political system. But if we do something, we can have like all. I think, I think, I think the chairman, uh, forum, uh, I think it's uh, my brother, you understand so well. I think you can work together very closely for this. And I, 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 I do commit that I do this in Vietnam and Hawaii. The next one is, uh, you feel Vietnam, so I just saw this one and you, you know so much about Vietnam. So many people here is working in Vietnam. Recently, I think the so class uh Makai two weeks ago in Vietnam. So you know all very very well in Vietnam. So it's like so just uh noisy Vietnam to use time, you know, to approach the team. So this I saw in Nicoa from the and we uh and the and also the policy. And this is the the best. The first one is the project in Vietnam, the we call the zero carbon, uh, no plastic, you know, no box, everything, even we involve Coca-Cola, even Pepsi-Cola, even Ulibine, we involve uh, Dow Chemical, Dow Chemical, you know, who is the, uh, the you know, the Dow Chemical is the producer, you know, the pesticide, you know, the, you know, the orange, orange is in, in Vietnam. Now they, they don't need a lot of money in Vietnam now. And also where the director of the, you know, the, 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 the,
Because we are, we are already, you know, uh, as, as my brother, David said, the our age, nearly we finish our work. People are 70 now. The next generation, they do, they face the problem, which we cause. But we do cause. They face problem, and they have to solve. That is now we help them. So I think it's a, we did this, you know, the you know, scientific history, independence in the basic research, that is not that big. And this is oriented business, very important. Everything is oriented green. This is the key point, it's green oriented. Uh, the next one is some example in Vietnam to the very small, very small business. This is the, the fish stick in Nyasha. In Nyasha fish stick, it's a, I, 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 I discovered somebody here in Nyasha. You know, in Nyasha fish, the very small, the, the fish. But they use uh, fish for the fish tank, it's both to Japanese country in Vietnam too. And they use everything from the fish, no waste, everything. So circular. Even they can transfer this, you know, to other countries. So absolutely. And they feed the society, the customer society together. This we call the Russian community. Because they cut the, they, they, you know, they use that one. They, they is willing to buy higher price, but they, you know, they keep this good environment and good business. This credit for everybody. So this one, so this way, this, this the best more. Uh, the always, you know, all the sector involved in the tea, even the wheat, uh, tulipa, even in Hawaii, I have seen also, and also the, uh, you know, the marine culture. So, uh, so, so last of all, I, I, I bring here the Mr. Win you know, Chairman Win for the Chicago. He's in a very fighting now, you know, in the, in the marine culture. I, you know, I invited him to, to Hawaii now, but he's so busy now in the sea anyway. But he, 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 he gave the best uh, visit to, uh, to come and say, man, and everybody here. Yes, he cannot, uh, he cannot come here this time, but he's uh, working for me. And you know, I think about you know, the conflict between the traditional and the modern. If every modern now, you know, become a modern farmer, you know, you see in the West, in Australia, you know, in everywhere, you know, the children, they don't like to become a farmer. They, 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 they like something to do to modern, something to business, something to finance. We don't like to, you know, to become a farmer. That's problem. You know, we don't have the children to do the farmer. Everywhere. The same way now, the farmer, you know, the competition. Hungary to who has to nobody in New Zealand, you know, no children. You know, before they move to the city, who do in farmer? No, that's no, problem. That's the problem. Okay, I, I, I told uh, my friend that you That both, you know, this is help, you know, help, help the uh, sea. Uh, so the way, now, now, now it's very interesting. Now, very interesting. Now, this the Sophie commercial between Vietnam and Hawaii, 10 years now. So I think uh, you know so well. You need to know so well. Before we find the Sophie in Hawaii, it's the best quality in the world and very expensive. In some time, Tokyo and you know in uh, uh, mid uh, mid east or something like this, you you can you can drink you know hundred or two hundred US dollar one cup coffee, one cup coffee. It's very easy. Even in New York, in Tokyo, one hundred one cup coffee. This is how I do it. This good I also plant the high coffee in the island. Now I bring from here in the city and I plant plant it. Now this is how I cooking is the best in the world. And Vietnam is a country with the Brazil is a produce a lot of coffee. We, we are in the top top two in you know top 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 two Arabica, but top one the robusta. So Vietnam Brazil is a huge. So that we think about it, how to buy you know the work with coffee Vietnam and to be online for the best one. And I work you know with uh, the you know chairman. I mean, say support with the uh, governor, you know, 
Vic, 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 uh, Vic Island, uh, you know, the Mark Miller, Utano, you know, uh, Jinin, and now the uh, Douglas, yeah, Vokana, recently, you know, now this, uh, the Kupi Arabica in Turna, it's a very good one, one of the best, one of the best, you know, so much, uh, you know, so we know that. And this, uh, uh, Rubuta, Rubusta, is Central Highland. Huge. The huge there is pure. On that. And we work it how much? 10 years now. Years by year, many generations come back, come back. And, uh, this one, I saw this one. Now, we just cut in Honolulu. Now, uh, so glad, Mr. Chowan, uh, Janice, Cook, and I myself. We sit in restaurant here to identify the how to do the coffee. And, and, and last full, so you know that, uh, you know, so the uh, time is the bread, this is the coffee, the, the potential coffee person, you know. And, and the first one, you see that, you know, we sit in, you know, the last one. So we really, the first, you know, coffee, first, uh, you know, the food coffee. The food coffee for the sustainable future. So Vietnam product. But with Hawaii experience, and I think this uh, everybody taste it, even you know the Doka, the other thing you know, and I think this uh, I think uh, uh, everybody we like it, and and we we plan the you know the market orientation is Vietnam, Hawaii, State of Hawaii, uh, Korea, and and Japan, and I hope that you know so you can help us to to you know, to develop this this the you know the product the fruitful production. You know, cooperation between Vietnam and Hawaii for one decade, ten years. I think and now we really and 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 better you know. And those glasses, you know, the glasses, the glasses, the glasses, the glasses. In in Vietnam, two weeks ago, when we see the first Vietnam Hawaii book report, you know, really that. And very soon, I hope that will be in Hawaii. So. I uh, I think uh, this uh, better sort of resistance for this and I hope that uh, uh, do we enjoy it and many things in life and it's improved so uh, let's up think to get some more for this. Now the the the, the, the second uh, presentation I think this uh, uh, in the program. It's a Bacca company for the uh, nano economy. I think it's this one up is the circular economy. And I think this, uh, she is uh, um, uh, Madame Zuyen, profile in the paper, is director and chairman of the Bacca company. And you can introduce today. And it's exactly right. And I'm not sure you go Tôi xin chào mọi người đã có mặt buổi ngày hôm nay. Tôi đại diện cho công ty dược liệu Bắc Hà. Rất vui là được gặp mọi người và được trao đổi với mọi người một chút về cái công nghệ nano. Và nó là cũng là một cái công nghệ mới hiện nay để chuyển đổi những cái thảo dược mà khó, có giá trị nhưng mà khó hấp thu vào cơ thể thành những sản phẩm mà có giá trị hấp thu dễ cho cơ thể trong những cái trong hỗ trợ điều trị một chút à, hỗ trợ điều trị về kể cả hỗ trợ điều trị điều cho điều đến điều mỹ phẩm điều và điều dược phẩm uh, Hello ladies and gentlemen uh, Miss Duyên Nguyễn is the CEO of Becca Companies in Việt Nam uh, uh, she, uh, yeah, with the strength of uh, extracting the herbal She has, a, she has a group of engineers that have her continue to extract the herbal into the cosmetic and medicine to help the body to absorb the medicine into the cell so make it easier to treat the incurable disease. Okay, okay. thank you. Because uh, she, uh, she cannot, uh, see English is limited. Uh, I am, uh, you know, the scientist, so I know so where this problem. So I, I can, uh, you know, help her. Uh, to present this uh, presentation. Yeah, continue. Because this is the technical. Uh, I think this uh, dance technology, you know, uh, everybody know. We, 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 every, every country produce. Even in Vietnam, we have the German, American, Canada, you know, France, and Vietnamese, Indian, many economies. But it's different. But it's different. 
the important for uh, nanofilming here is you know the the you know the size of the you know the nano. Yeah. So in here uh, the the membrane the you know the the, the size is hundred nano milliliter. So if the you know the the the, the size of the nanofilmin smaller than that, so that they can enter to the, the cell. Important, you know. And in China now, a lot of the company in the world is, uh, you know, they produce, you know, uh, now this uh, Madame Jean, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of company now at the moment, about, you know, 80, 90, 70. The innovative is the, uh, this uh, Madame Jean, and this one, I, I follow this company 10 years now, in the Pakistan. The Pakistan province is uh, in the north of Vietnam, near, uh, you know, about 100 kilometers from both border, uh, China. And this is a very good, uh, uh, you know, the, the grooming, and, and we can produce this, you know, and uh, the quality is uh, identified by the, 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 the American lab, that the quality is a very good one. And the important, I think here, uh, the, the sea boy, the sea boy for this uh, product, is uh, they can produce the nano you know, size is uh, 20 nanometer, 20. So this 20 nanometer, that means they can, you know, very easy to enter to the cell. And you, you know that, you know, the curumin is the best material, you know, to prevent the tumor, you know, to, uh, to repair the DNA, you know, also to, you know, increase, you know, the, 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 um, immunology of the, 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 the body. So that's the when this nano is more and the quality is clean. It's clean nearly 99%, 99 to 4.0%. This is the, you know, the PTF. Yeah? And at the other, the, the, you know, the medical quality. And that, that's okay. So that, I think this, uh, the, the, the material for the pharmacy, processing, and for the cosmetic, and this uh, raw material to produce the further, you know, a product of cosmetic or pharmacy is a raw material. It's very one. And I think that you can find, you can find, you know, and, and this all the way from the Vietnam. It's for the day they can, we can capture in Vietnam. You know, and so Vietnam, we have the uh, many uh, good landscape for, you know, for the herb plant, including the, the curumin. And, and this, uh, this uh, I think, the, the, the huge resources, you know, not only for Vietnam, but for other countries. We can work together for Korea, for Hawaii, for, you know, for Japan, and uh, so we can work together in Vietnam for this. And I think that's uh, this uh, good opportunity, uh, the simplest coffee in Vietnam, so we can, you know, we can work together with the other company in, 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 in the country, you know, in Hawaii or Korea or in, in Japan. I think it's a good one for us. Uh, I saw this time, you know, uh, technology and some product, uh, um, this, uh, China, this company is produced and at the moment it's uh, on the market and uh, also they uh, combine with other, you know, uh, for example, the green tea or, you know, other material from a uh, plant for, you know, the mixed uh, material or, and the mix, uh, you know, the, the new product and, and even, the, you know, the, the, the uh, solid or, you know, or, li or liquid. You know, so that I think is, is good for everybody. Uh, so this is some example you see, you know, the trade mark, you know, in, in the market even now. And the star now this book to the country and some uh, example you saw a uh, little uh, for, uh, to present for everybody, you know, if you like that one, you know, uh, outside. Uh, I think uh, this is uh, very helpful for everybody and it's a good opportunity for the company to be here and also good for company people to show this and we can, you know, invite uh, other, you know, uh, partners from other countries if uh, we have the opportunity to can work together. I think this uh, uh, key point here that we have a good material, we have a good, you know, uh, landscape to produce you know, curumin and the technology already in, in hand. And I think this is the way we can develop in the, in the future collaboration. And uh, I hope that uh, in uh, this uh, conference, uh, so uh, you will enjoy it. And uh, uh, for this one, uh, we, we try, you know, to uh, to uh, to uh, uh, increase the quality, uh, in increase the market, 
and we work together uh, with the other partner and we are trying to and, uh, and uh, I think nearly uh, 95, 99, 99, 99 you know, percent of the all uh, you know mercury is a nano you know two uh, twenty nanometer and this is solved in the water. I think it's, it's, it's very important. Thank you very much for your question. À, ngoài những cái mà à, bác Trường vừa có trao đổi với à, các ngài thì à, tôi muốn nhấn mạnh thêm một chút nữa đó là um, hiện nay à, bác Hà à, đã làm ra một cái sản phẩm đó là sản phẩm nano curcumin dạng nước à, rất là dễ cho người sử dụng mà hiện tại bây giờ là à, bác Hà chúng tôi là đơn vị duy nhất trên thế giới có thể làm được cái curcumin dạng nước ạ Uh, Mr. Yuen would like to emphasize that beside the presentation uh, that she already showed her, uh, so, to, so to everyone, she would like to let you know that uh, Bakha company also can produce the liquid uh, curcumin, which is uh, very important because liquid curcumin can be uh, absorbed very easily by the cells. And Bakha company is the only company all over the world that can produce the liquid curcumin medicine. So it is very important. Yeah. Thank you very much. À, tôi rất cảm ơn mọi người à, đã nghe chúng tôi thuyết trình ngày hôm nay. Và sau buổi thuyết trình ngày hôm nay thì bên Việt Nam phía chúng tôi có mang một chút quà tặng của Bác Hà à, kính gửi và tặng à, Tất cả các uh, đại biểu ở đây một phần quà nhỏ mang từ Việt Nam đến ạ. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, and uh, after the pres after the forum today, Bacha Company would like to give to all of you some gifts from our company to show our gratitude for you for your attention. Thank you. Now the, the, the first uh, presentation is very important for the zero carbon industry and uh, renewable energy. I introduce uh, uh, Madam uh, Chen Thi Thu Ha, Thu ha and uh, Mr. Uh, Quy Ngoc, uh, who is a uh, picture here. Yeah, so that's, uh, he, they are, uh, if I have a deeper developer, strongly that one. So please, yeah. Xin chào tất cả mọi người. À, tôi là Trần Thị Hương Hà, là CEO của công ty cổ phần Well Power Group Việt Nam. À, tôi xin lời gửi lời cảm ơn đến giáo sư Nguyễn Hữu Ninh, là người đã kết nối và đưa chúng tôi đến tham gia cái hội nghị ở trong cái diễn đàn là Business Economics and Class Chain. Sau đây thì tôi xin giới thiệu à, về công ty chúng tôi và đang à, những và những cái sản phẩm và những công nghệ đang hướng tới việc uh, chung tay giảm thải môi trường ạ. Good morning everyone. My name is Trần Thị Hương Hà. I am CEO of Well Power Group. As for uh, I want to thank to professional Nguyễn Hữu Ninh uh, for, for connecting to this forum and today I will show you the introduction of our company. Wells Power Group Vietnam joint stock company was established in 2019, focusing on developing and investing in clean and renewable energy projects. Currently, Wells Power Group Vietnam has been planning, implementing and operating a wide range of projects in clean and renewable energy and high-tech in central Vietnam. These projects include solar and wind power plants, green hydrogen plants, zero-carbon high-tech industrial park. 
with total investment worth billions of US dollars and a focus on eco-friendly industry, Wealth Power Group Vietnam has always received great attention and support from the Vietnamese government and local authorities. The group's projects have been offered generous incentives in terms of tax, land lease, infrastructure, and human resources. In the field of energy, Wealth Power Group Vietnam has so far built and operated three solar power plants, including Phong Điền 2 Solar Power Plant in Phong Điền District, Thừa Thiên Huế Province, with a capacity of 50 megawatt, total investment of 50 million US dollars, and operation started in December 2020. Mỹ Hiệp Solar Power Plant in Phu Mỹ District, Bình Định Province, with capacity of 50 megawatt, total investment of 50 million US dollars, and operation started in December 2020. Đầm Chao Solar Power Plant, a floating project in Chao Lagoon in Fumi District, Bình Định Province, with a capacity of 50 megawatt, total investment of 55 million US dollars, and operation started in December 2020. Every year, Wealth Power Group Vietnam generates 250 million kilowatt of electricity from renewable energy, cutting carbon dioxide emissions by 162,000 tons. In an attempt to promote clean and renewable energy as well as emission reduction in Vietnam, Wealth Power Group Vietnam is proactively carrying out several projects worth billions of US dollars. Among those projects, the biggest is Chinmay LNG power plant, located in Chinmay Lanco Economic Zone, Lanco District, Tutunhue Province. This 100% private investment plant will have an estimated capacity of 4,800 megawatt, total investment of 5.4 billion US dollars, slated for implementation in the second quarter of 2024. The projects will include main components, including LNG receiving port, LNG terminal, regas plant, gas fire plant, and pylons. At present, green hydrogen is a promising clean energy for the future and a solution to cutting emission. Therefore, Wealth Power Group Vietnam decided to start the project of green hydrogen plant in Chen Mai Lanco Economic Zone, Lanco District, Thừa Thiên Huế Province. The plant will have a capacity of 3 million tons per year total investment of 4 billion US dollars and is planned to distribute its product from the fourth quarter of 2024. To tap the potential of energy production in six provinces across Laos Vietnam border, Wealth Power Group Vietnam has made a master plan for a renewable energy project with a total capacity of 3000 megawatt. This project includes a series of solar wind geothermal power plants in Laos, which will export energy back to Vietnam. The project has a total investment of 5.6 billion US dollars and is expected to start operation from the fourth quarter of 2023. Last but not least, the Zero Carbon High Tech Industrial Park project has an area of 120 hectare and total investment of 45 million US dollars, located in Phong Điền District, Thừa Thiên Huế Province. Chen Mei LNG gas-fired power plant project is implemented by Chen Mei LNG Joint Stock Company, a member of Wealth Power Group Vietnam. This power plant will be operated with the most advanced technology and LNG imported from the US. Based on a sustainable design, the gas-fired power plant will have no impact on the overall heritage space of Thừa Thiên Huế Province. In addition, the project will contribute 4 trillion Vietnamese dong or 172 million US dollars to the provincial budget per year and at the same time accelerate local socio-economic development by creating more than 20,000 jobs, implementing a training scheme for enhancing human resources of the electric power industry and adding another source of supply for the national electricity system. 
Green hydrogen is a clean energy source that plays a vital role in the global energy structure. It is also an indispensable solution for energy transition, phasing out fossil fuels and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Currently, global hydrogen consumption reaches 70 million tons per year, but most of this amount is sourced from fossil materials such as coal, natural gases. Carbon dioxide emission from hydrogen production in the world amounts to 830 million tons per year. Realizing opportunities and potential from demands for green hydrogen and pollution mitigation, Wells Power Group Vietnam has researched and implemented an electrolysis-based green hydrogen factory project with a capacity of up to 3 million tons per year. As scheduled, annual output of green hydrogen will reach at least 1 million tons in the first stage from 2023 to 2026 and doubled to 2 million tons in the second stage from 2027 to 2030. The green hydrogen factory will be built in Chen Mei Lanko Economic Zone, 2 km from Chen Mei Deepwater Port, 5 km from National Highway, and 6 km from 500 kV electrical substation. The Zero Carbon High Tech Industrial Park is a role model for achieving the goal of net zero carbon emissions. This industrial park will use renewable energy in all production activities, and industrial wastewater treatment will meet all technical standards. The Zero Carbon High Tech Industrial Park is located in Phong Dien District, close to a number of major transportation facilities and convenient for transportation, 37 km from Hue City, 28 km from Hue Train Station, close to 1A National Highway and North-South Railway. 45 km from Phu Bai International Airport, 40 km from Thuan An Port, 70 km from Chen Mei Deep Water Port. The Zero Carbon High Tech Industrial Park boasts well planned and well developed infrastructure thanks to being part of the Phong Dien Industrial Park. Located close to three solar power plants, namely Phong Dien 2 Operational, the 50 MW Phong Dien 2 Extended, and the 150 megawatt Fondian 3. Zero Carbon will always have stable, clean energy supply 24 hours a day. Factories inside Zero Carbon High Tech Industrial Park will also enjoy water supply available right at their gates. There will be a wastewater treatment plant with circular technology and an estimated capacity of 30,000 cubic meter per day and night. Besides, the industrial park has a smart electric system that can ensure power supply 24 hours a day and a lot of greenery areas for carbon dioxide absorption. The Zero Carbon High Tech Industrial Park is a promising destination for investors, the gathering place for a business community that acts for climate change mitigation and contributes to environmental protection. That is the end of our video, and Viet Well Power Vietnam is a unit that you have to create a business community that adapt to climate change in order to fulfill their strong commitment uh, of Vietnam and 150 countries all around the world, bring greenhouse gas emission to euros. So, um, well, Power Vietnam also have to manufacture reduce ca carbon emission at the Euro Carbon Industrial Park that I showed you before. From solar power, wind powder, and hydrogen. Uh, as follow, we will build according to the standard desire of investor, uh, turnkey, and continually train and provide operation for the plan and international certification at the request of partner and each specific industrial. While Power Vietnam is always aiming for business 
communi community to join hand to reduce their carbon emission and adapt their and adapt to climate change. Thank you for your listening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.